gloves on, you have to have the clothes on, you gotta have a face mask on and a headpiece. It's an unsafe process. You're reaching into heat that's 2,000 degrees. The smoke will just kill you. <laughs> I mean, it's just barreling out black. It's dangerous. Very hazardous. It's worse than smoking. I'd say it's worse than smoking. It's a dance. It's the raccoon dance. It's almost like a primitive, exciting thing. We just keep going back, you know. I raccoon just about every Sunday, faithfully. It's my, <laughs> it's, it's, it's my I better not say that, it's my religion. <laughs> my name is Barb Gibson and I work in ceramics. We're on Six Mile in Livonia. This is my home and this is where my studio is in the basement. And I have loved Livonia all these years. <laughs> I, I do. <laughs> Um, an amazing material because it responds to your touch. For me, I'm a process person and I love a lot of process and this gives it to me. Painting 
for me was too cerebral, so I, I, I didn't like painting. It's just a brush. I, I don't mean just a brush, but you have to know what to do with the brush. But it wasn't enough activity for me. So it, play did that for me. It's constantly in a state of flux. It's uh, wet, it's dry, it's bisked, it's hard, it's, 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 it's an amazing material. These are different glazes. These are speckled glazes. And so I can go in there and later on when I want to use these, I can put them in and I can paint and go, oh, I don't like that color with that. When it comes out green, I go, oh man, I hate this glaze. <laughs> it's not that I hate the color. It's usually that I, I don't like, I don't like it on clay for some reason. Or it keeps coming out of the raccoon kiln green even if I put red on it and I go what is this so it shows lack of control in what I'm doing with with this this particular glaze I make uh, what I call fine art funky art just different different things that I'm interested in because I get tired of making the same dishes and pots. It's it's not as fun as designing and and saying, oh, this will fit in this and this. Last couple of years, I've been working in bones, and everybody, you know, a lot of times freaks out about that. But I laugh and say that's my contribution to recycling. Bones are are beautiful. It's for me. It's like seeing. Uh, I I love a building before they put the skin on it. I love the, the skeleton structure of the building before they cover it all up. You know, it's beautiful, and you can see it all. And that's the same thing with with a lot of pieces that I work in. Having art as a part of my life has been probably the best therapy I could ever ask for. <laughs> when I was uh, first married and we lived in uh, Dearborn Heights, I, I had a neighbor who uh, was in hobby ceramics and that's what drew me to clay in the end. But in the beginning, I uh, worked in hobby ceramics and I have to say, I loved it. I pursued it at an incredible rate. And then I went to work for the companies. I went to work for Mako, and I went and I flew around and taught teachers uh, techniques that I developed and worked in underglazes and glazes. And um, hobby ceramics was gigantic, and so was the industry, the the uh, glaze industry. But these are different glazes. These are speckled glazes. And so I can go in there and go, oh, yeah, that's the one I want. And then I need a pink underglaze to go, or a deeper one to go with this. D just for decision making. After a while, clay became so, I became so obsessed with it. And I, I thought, oh, I want to, I don't want to do hobby ceramics anymore. I want to learn how to throw. I want to learn how to throw on a wheel. The, the rhythm of throwing satisfied me because it was like centering yourself because you would sit over that wheel and as you felt the forms grow, it was like coming right out of your fingertips. Yeah. I loved throwing, it was exciting, but after a while I found that, uh, that it, it didn't satisfy me anymore. And so I thought, oh, I think I'm gonna go to school and, and learn, really get a degree in clay. And the chemistry of the glazes, I didn't know. I knew how to mix the stuff, but I didn't know what they were and what they were about. So I said, I'm just gonna go get the degree. But easier said than done, you know, I, I had to, before I could get into University of Michigan, I had to have a um, high grade point average, and so I went to Schoolcraft College, which I, I loved, and I spent three years there. You don't go to Michigan and just learn clay. You have to know fine arts, and so I, my degree is in fine arts. The temperature is uh, hotter. And, and the numbers aren't negative anymore. They're, they're just cone four is, is lower than a five. It, well, if you want it to be slip, you just add more water. Okay. So I have a 
bachelor's in fine arts from U of M and a master's in fine arts from U of M. So that was seven years. And uh, I loved it. I, I learned how to do many things in clay and firings. I couldn't do raku here at my house. I, I could, but it would require a, a tremendous amount because it makes a lot of smoke and a lot of, and I had to, so now I do it at, in, at, the, at a guild that I belong to and uh, um, they have all that stuff and I, I really love that. <laughs> Potter's Guild, which is a tremendous place. Guilds are all over. And it's a place where, you know, students come in and people who don't want to invest in, in kilns and in uh, large areas and they just want to come and work when they want to work. So um, grouping together like that is nice too. So you have the members who keep the guild running and doing things and then bring teachers in to, to teach. room where people come and they wax the bottoms of the pot so they don't stick to the kiln shelves and this all this area here they they um, get the glaze out they roll it out and they stir it up and they dip their pieces and here they bring it and it's it's a drying room this is where this is where uh, they keep all this stuff in uh, while they're working on it line up here would be the original and then as you go down this is mixed with whatever this glaze is and it goes all the way across and this is mixed with another one and it just it just goes all the way back and forth value is for new students coming in they get to see other people working you know and and that encourages them and they it, we all learn from each other uh, they call everything um, potting but it's not uh, or if you're a potter you just throw that's not true uh, you can sag the piece into a mold into a, a, a plaster mold and do it that way. You can lay it over the top of something. Uh, there's a lot of ways to hand build. And there's so many kinds of clay. There's so many. There's so many types of clay bodies. There's raku clay body. There's heavily grog. There's brown. There's white clays. There's porcelain clays. And different parts of the country have different, different clays. I think the different types of firings and the different types of kilns are, are extremely interesting. Like most gas kilns we use for, um, ox uh, we can use them for oxidation, but we use them for reduction too. And then there's raku firings. The raku is a Japanese method of firing. You have to have protection, and so you have gloves, and you have a coat, and you have a face mask, and you take the pot out of the kiln and put it in a uh, garbage can filled with uh, strips of paper. Sometimes we use leaves, sometimes we use different different materials, combustible materials to make it catch fire and reduction occurs and it, it, it brings out the metallics and the glazes and it's very interesting. Well, we're, we're creating an atmosphere where we're going to starve the pot 
with well, no oxygen. Like, really so to do that, you know, we'll put it in close the lid so it smokes. Yes. And the pot's looking for oxygen, you know. If I took that same glaze and put it in an electric kiln and didn't put it in reduction anywhere, it would be just a uh, glossy glaze. The goal of this one is that it'll turn out kind of white. It's like an off-white ivory with like a purple-pink blush. But of course I've just been informed that what I asked for and what I got are totally different things, which is much like life in general. Here in a moment. When it's quite this windy. <laughs> this one turned up, let me see, green! <clears throat> one of our piece. Well, I guess I got a little blush. We don't like We both green. really <laughs> like it a lot. <laughs> this is Raku. The thermal shock of the clay pulling it out of a red hot kiln and putting it in a, a pit of, in a garbage can, you get a lot of cracking. I decided one day, well, I'm not going to pitch all my stuff just because it's got a crack. I'm going to fix it. So I, I use hot glue gun and I, I put the design all the way down the crack and then I just I put gold leaf over the top and feather it off. You know, I always say when people get preconceived ideas of things in clay, it's, it's probably not a good idea because the clay coming out of the kiln, if you, if you glaze it different, you know, we, me and you and Nate can put on green, a, a green glaze, and when it comes out, we got, you know, he'll love it and I'll hate it and you'll, you know, and mm. we all put it on different a little heavier, a little, and it depends on what it's in. If it's in reduction or oxidation and all kinds of stuff like that, it has, it has a real profound effect on it. So when it, people get their pieces out of the kiln, they go, oh, I hate that. That's not what I wanted. And so I always tell my students, don't do that. Just accept what comes out of the kiln until you can control it, you know. But don't say, oh, I hate yeah. this. It's not what I wanted. It, we get too caught up and all this stuff has to be perfect and, you know, all this. Well, what is real art? I mean, it gets so philosophical and so tied down with... Um, I think it's, for, for me, um, I like to see people grow and break out of their, um, pun, the mold and get on with other things, you know. Uh, some will call it art, some will call it junk, some will call it, you know, oh, you know, it doesn't need that, it doesn't need this. People um, have to consider um, the value of it, what can I do with this? And it, you don't have to do anything with it. It's just, you just have to look at it, you know? It's just there to look at, just like a piece of art. Clay is um, an amazing material. It, it, you can make it as complicated as you want, and you can make it as simple as you want. And that's, that's why it, it is so intriguing to so many people. It's an amazing material. <laughs> the end! <laughs>